Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for this uh, special online version of Yoga on the Labyrinth. Thank you for welcoming us into your space, wherever that is. Uh, each week, we ground our practice in a particular theme, and this week's theme is delayed gratification. Delayed gratification, I was like, Mm, I don't know about that. I don't know about delayed gratification. Not only because I am not great at it myself, I'm probably not the person who should be talking to you about delayed gratification, but also just because of the ways that it actually shows up in our social and political discourses um, that I think right now are really on trial in uh, a meaningful way. I think about um, queer people who are told that their purpose in life is to suppress their identities um, indefinitely. That is like their only way of actually moving through the world successfully. Um, I think of a lot of uh, BIPOC communities who are told um, that their purpose is to uh, delay the, uh, the demands of justice indefinitely. Um, everyone is uh, told to kind of internalize destructive and I think ultimately imperial narratives about assuming our role in a script that we didn't write ourselves, but that ultimately keeps power and privilege at the top and those who enjoy it most. So there's a kind of real shadow side to the language and concept of delayed gratification that right now more than ever, I think is important to acknowledge, especially in a space like this. But if we step back from that, and we think about what delayed gratification might mean for us as a spiritual practice, as a quality that we can cultivate in our own lives, how it can serve us and not these oppressive systems, then I think we realize that we're already practicing it in our practice and that it actually does things for us that really make us more human, more whole, more capable of surmounting the challenges that we face in our lives and in the world. And the way that it does that for me in like a practical sense is that it insists that I must be patient with myself even in the midst of the tension, even in the midst of the pain and distraction, even when I know I'm not hitting the asana right, when I know that I'm not quite getting that pose the way that I should, allowing myself to step back from those feelings, there's a way in which I want to gratify that feeling of judgment against myself because it kind of feels good to feel guilty. <laughs> and to say, no, no, like actually living in that space, in the ambiguity of that space, in the tension of that space, is ultimately what brings us to a place of being able to really marshal our wills in the direction of great things, of great change, great change in our practice, great change in our lives, and even ultimately, I think, great change in society. That's why yoga um, might have a, an, an origin in our kind of embodied practice, but is expressed even on a global scale with things like karma yoga. And we see that in the ancient Indic writings. Uh, and so that's my encouragement to you tonight. Uh, delayed gratification, a mm, little bit of a shadow right now, but at a personal level, it can be a source for tremendous empowerment if we embrace it and channel it for those higher purposes. I hope that this practice is as much a blessing to you as it is to me, and I can't wait to see you all here again in person. We are looking to do that uh, in June, so let's get ready um, as a community. Let's think about what that uh, will look and feel like together, and I just can't wait to see you all again. Namaste. Welcome to Grace Cathedral and Yoga on the Labyrinth. My name is Darren Main, and I'll be sharing this yoga practice with you. I also have Destiny Muhammad here as a musician who will be providing music for our practice. Around me, you see a number of yoga models. I've invited them in, socially distanced and masked, so that they can demonstrate different variations on the poses to help you get more from your practice at home. Soon, hopefully, we will be joining together back in this beautiful space, but until then, I hope you enjoy this video practice. Our theme for this practice is delayed gratification. Now, of course, all of us love instant gratification, whether it's food or shopping or whatever it is, we want it, and we want it now. And yoga asks us to step back 
and to be mindful of the choices we make instead of grabbing at the first thing we see. So as you practice today, consider how you might delay gratification and make wiser choices in your life for your health, your relationships, for society, all around. Let's begin our practice with a meditation. Coming to a comfortable seat, you can close your eyes and straighten your back. Notice the busyness of your mind and the busyness of the world around you. Acknowledging that busyness in all the ways in which we have fallen out of balance. Now drop into your breath. Let your breath become your anchor. Our opening meditation is from Marianne Williamson. You may believe that you are responsible for what you do, but not for what you think. The truth is that you are responsible for what you think because it is only at this level that you can exercise choice. What you do comes from what you think. I've asked Destiny Muhammad to lead us in our opening OM. The eyes remain closed, empty the lungs. Inhale slowly from your belly, upward through the ribs, all the way to touch the collarbone. Then exhale from the collarbone, emptying the ribs and the belly. Again, from the belly, slowly up. And from the top, slowly down. Five counts inhaling. Five counts exhaling. Five in. And five out. Five in and five out. As you're ready, you can open the eyes and maintain your breath. Inhale the arms up overhead. Lengthen the fingertips high and let the shoulders drop down. Bring the palms together and bend the elbows, the hands dropping toward the top of the head. Now draw the elbows back and breathe here. Five in, five out. You can tilt the torso to the right, dropping that right elbow. Inhale up. Tilt to the left. And up. Straighten the arms. Take the right hand to the earth behind you, the left hand to the knee, and take a gentle twist. Inhale the arms up. And then to the other side. Deep breaths. Inhale the arms up. 
Exhale the arms down. Bring the hands to the earth behind you and take a gentle back bend by arching the upper back. And then up. Transition to child pose. A forehead on the earth, the buttocks back at the heels, the arms extended in front of you. Child is our resting pose. Come to this pose anytime you need a break and modify your practice in whatever way feels safe and appropriate for your unique body. If you can do more, you're welcome to do that as long as you do it safely. And if you need to do less to modify or rest, please do that. As you're ready, come on up to a table. A few cat and cow stretches, dropping the belly down as you inhale, rounding the spine as you exhale. Inhale, dropping the belly, lifting the heart. Exhale, rounding the spine. Flowing back and forth. Beautiful. Each breath, each movement liberating the spine. Come to a flat back position in table and start drawing circles on the hands and knees. So the torso is doing some clockwise circles. They can be small circles or you can make them big sweeping circles or a little of both. Each rotation opening the hips and shoulders and then counterclockwise. If you find a pocket of tightness or resistance in the body, you can work through that. Come to stillness and table, curl the toes under, and find downward dog. Breathing, five in, five out. Soften the knees, step up and down. Shift the hips side to side. Inhale, come forward to a plank. Exhale, press back, downward dog. Inhale, forward. Exhale, press back. One more time, forward, and back. You can now walk the feet to the hands. And hang forward, take hold of the elbows, and sway side to side. Coming up one vertebra at a time. Step to the top of your mat. Bring the hands to the heart. Sun salutations. Inhale, reach the arms up. And exhale, fold to touch the earth. Look forward. Starting gentle, step back. Drop the knees, the chest, and the chin. Pulling through for cobra. And exhale to downward dog. You can step or hop the feet forward. Exhale, fold deep. Reach the arms high. Hands to the heart. 
Inhale, reach high. Exhale, fold. Look forward. Step or hop back. You can do full chaturanga or drop the knees for support. Pull through for cobra or upward dog. And then downward dog. Five in, five out. Step or hop. Exhale, fold. Reaching high. Hands to the heart. Inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. Look forward. Step or hop back. And cycle through. Upward. Downward dog. One last round. Step or hop the feet forward. Exhale to a deep fold. Reach the arms high and hands to the heart. Beautiful. Inhale, reach high. Folding deep. Let the breath move your body. Step or hop back. And cycle through. Upward. Downward dog. You can rest here, holding downward dog, or come to child for a deeper rest. your yoga mat there is a little war that happens inside you the part of you that wants to do something easy and the part of you that ultimately chooses to do yoga sometimes the other part of you wins but today the yoga part one the delayed gratification part one Celebrate that choice. Downward dog if you're in child. Step or hop the feet forward. Exhale, fold deep. Take hold of your big toes. Look forward to flatten the back. And then deepen the fold if you need to. You can bend your knees to get hold of the toes and then begin straightening slowly, lifting the hips. Breathe. Each inhalation lifting the hips higher, each exhalation folding deeper. Five in and five out. Inhale the arms up overhead. Clasp the hands, extend the pointer fingers up. Work at straightening the elbows but relaxing the shoulders down. These two movements seem to oppose each other. So lengthening through the elbows, but relaxing the shoulders down. You can bring the soles of the feet or the sides of the feet together, the insides of the feet. Press into your left foot and take a side stretch to the right. Good, breathe here. Five in and five out. Inhale, come up. And to the other side. Breathe. Five in, five out. Come up. Take a soft back bend. Exhale, fold. 
Take the right foot back, round the heel, and come on up to warrior one. So warrior one, the knee is directly over the ankle. You're squaring the hip, and you're grounding through the back heel. Breathe here, deep breaths. Straight in the front knee, we're going to take a runner stretch. Exhale, fold over that extended knee. Feeling that deep stretch down the back of the leg. And if you want to deepen that stretch even more, lift your left big toe off the floor. Bend the knee. Come back up to warrior one. We're gonna work on balance here. You may need your hands on your hips for support or out like airplane wings or up by the ears. It's sort of up to you. You're gonna shift the weight into the front foot and come up to warrior three. Deep breaths. Float back to warrior one, hands to the earth, step forward, fold deep, inhale the arms up. Again, you can either clasp the hands with the pointer fingers up, or you can take hold of your left wrist and side stretch to the right and give a gentle pull on that wrist if you like. Inhale up, and to the other side. Inhale up, folding. Look forward, this time the left foot back, grounding the heel, and taking warrior one. You have a few options here. One is you can do this with a really bitter scowl on your face, or you can do it with a smile on your face. You're all wearing masks, so I won't know. But try both and see which feels better. Straightening the right knee. Exhale, fold. <coughs> Deep breaths. <clears throat> five in, five out. Bend the knee, inhale back to warrior one, and then flowing into warrior three. The arm position of your choice whatever supports your balance. Very gracefully float back to warrior one. Exhale the hands down. Step forward, folding deep. Inhale the arms up, and then exhale the hands to the heart. Close the eyes and find your breath. Five in, five out. of your practice. Notice the benefits of delaying gratification, choosing the healthier path. As 
you inhale, reach the arms up and turn to face the right side of your mat, stepping the feet about a leg length apart. Good. Now, if you're at home practicing, you can use a yoga block if you have one. If you don't, you can always make do without, but they can be helpful. You can find them on Amazon and at any yoga studio or health food store. You can reach out and down for triangles. So the right foot turns to the right, left foot in. Reach out and down. You can bring your hand to the shin or to your block. The focus here is, in many respects, on the left hip bone rotating up and back as you try to reach to touch the ceiling. Breathe five in and five out. Five in, five out. Touch the ceiling. Inhale, come up. Pigeon toe the feet. Take your hands to your hips. Lift the chest and heart. And then exhale, come forward. Good. Once the hands come down to the floor, you can flatten the back. You can use your block if you have one, if you need it, or you can put that to the side. <clears throat> Walk your hands back between your feet. As you do this, lift the sit bones higher, lengthen the spine and fold deeper. Breathe. Now, keeping the hands on the floor, you're going to straighten the left leg and bend the right so that you're trying to sit on your right heel. And flex that left foot. And then switch sides. If you want to try folding over the extended leg, you can. Come back up, hands to the hips, and come the rest of the way up. Again, we'll be doing triangle on the other side with or without a block. Turn the left foot to the left, the right foot in slightly, reach out and down. Breathe here, five in and five out. Touch the ceiling. Touch the ceiling. For many of us, that means coming up and instead of touching the floor, touching the shin. Inhale, come up. Beautiful. Pigeon toe the feet. Clasp the hands behind you. Now, if your shoulders are tight, as mine tend to be, Holding a strap or a towel between your hands can help. Soften the knees slightly and fold hands up and over the back of the head. And start to notice the relationship between your knees and your shoulders. If you soften the knees, notice how your shoulders open. If you shift side to side, you'll notice one shoulder will open a little bit more than the other. Beautiful. Use a deep inhalation to come up. And step the hands and feet together to face the top of your mat. Bring the hands to your heart. Close the eyes. Find your center. The 
let's work on some balancing now. Take the feet about hip width apart. Inhale the arms up. Exhale, fold and touch the earth. There are a number of left and right cues here to confuse you, so pay close attention. Take the left hand to the left hip. Take the right hand, make quote marks with the fingers, and wrap them around the right big toe. As you're ready, stand up, bringing that right foot with bent knee all the way up to standing. And if you fall, like I'm about to, try not to judge yourself and just come back to the pose. If this is easy for you, you can start extending the leg out in front of you. You can do this with bent knee or with extended leg. You're going to open to the right side. Again, you can extend the leg out if you'd like. Come back center. And then place the foot on the floor, switching sides. Right hand at the hip. Come on up when you're ready. Open to the side. You can also just hold the knee if you need to. Beautiful. Come back center. Place the foot down. Take the feet about hip width apart, maybe a tiny bit wider. Bend the knees, squatting down. Beautiful. Take a moment to drop the chin to the chest. And give yourself a little scalp massage. There are marma points in Ayurveda all around the head, the face, the neck. These are very similar to acupressure points. Beautiful. Bring the hands to the floor, straighten the knees. Look forward, then step the feet back, one foot, and then the other. From this plank position, you're going to rotate your right arm up. You can take full Vashistasana with the knees off the floor or supported Vashistasana with your right knee on the earth. And if you can maintain balance, look up at the top hand. If balance is challenging, look at the standing hand. Switching sides. Again, the knee can be down or off the floor. And take the hand down, drop the knees, and find child pose. of your practice. Stretching out across the floor with your belly down. We're going to take some rolling cobras. 
The hands are under the shoulders. The intention here is not how fast you come up, it's how slow you come up and down. So you use a deep, long inhalation to lift the head and neck, chest and heart. Keep the hand, the weight out of the hands as much as you can. Maybe a teeny bit of weight to go a little higher at the top. And then slowly lower down with a complete, slow, prolonged exhalation. One vertebra at a time, lifting up, up, up and then lowering down one vertebra at a time as you exhale. Continue. And lower. Beautiful, one or two more on your own. to a position lying face down. I'm going to give you a few options. You can go as far into this as you like. Starting with Dhanurasana, bow pose, bend the knees, take hold of the ankles. Round one, simply kick the feet into the hands, kicking back, kicking back, 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 lifting from the breastbone. Lifting higher. Lift the breastbone higher. Beautiful. And release down now, nice and slow. Turn the head to one side. If you need a deeper rest, just stay here and rest. If you'd like to repeat the same pose again, go ahead and do that. If you'd like to go a little further, I'll give you some additional instructions once you're up there. So bending the knees if you're coming into the pose, kick the feet into the hands, lifting nice and high. And then if you want to go a little bit further, roll onto your right side. Gonna take me up on that one, huh? <laughs> I can't imagine why it's gonna be all over YouTube. <laughs> Inhale, coming up, and then over to the left side if you're doing that. Coming up whenever you're ready and releasing down. Turn your head to the other side. Beautiful work. You can roll onto your back. We're gonna take one more back bend. It can be a gentle back bend, it can be a supported back bend, or it can be a deep back bend, depending on what you need. So bridge pose or Seta Bandhasana is where we will begin. And for those of you who want to go into Urdhva you can. Take the feet flat on the floor lift the hips up. You can do this unsupported by clasping the hands beneath you. Or if you have a block handy, you can slide that under your sacrum for a supported version of the pose. The focus is on arching the upper back. Those of you who know Urdhva Dhanurasana can go ahead and do that. Urdhva, Urdhva Dhanurasana is a deep back bend, so please make sure it is a safe part of your practice and appropriate for your body. When you feel complete in your back bending, you can come out, lie flat on your back, 
and draw the knees to the chest. As you're ready, you can spread the arms out across the floor and drop your knees over to the right side. We did a lot of back bending, and a nice way to reward your spine with all that back bending is a gentle twist. If this twist strains your back, you might try making a fist and putting it between your knees. You can also take a yoga block or a folded blanket between the knees to support your low back. As you're ready, come on up. One knee, and then the other. Over to the other side. Five in and five out here. up slowly whenever you're ready. I'm going to offer you two options. One is an inversion pose such as shoulder stand. If you're going to do shoulder stand, make sure you know how to do it safely and that it's appropriate medically for you to be upside down. If you're not sure, you should absolutely chat with your doctor before going upside down. If you don't know, <clears throat> shoulder stand, or you would like a more gentle practice, you can take Supta Baddha Konasana by lying flat on your back, soles of the feet together, knees splaying open to the sides, a hand on the heart and a hand on the belly. Once you're in the pose of your choosing, you can take your breath to 10 counts in and 10 counts out. <clears throat> ten in, ten out, and simply notice how this feels. You had a choice. You could have done any number of things that would have given you instant gratification. But you chose to roll out your mat, to put forth effort, and to be uncomfortable at times. Start to notice the rewards of those efforts by noticing the rewards of your efforts on the yoga mat will be easier to notice the rewards of the efforts of delaying gratification in the rest of your life as well. If you are upside down, you can slowly come out. Take any finishing movement your body would enjoy. And then when you feel ready, you can come to Shavasana for deep relaxation. Lie flat. Surrender your body to the earth. Let your mind watch the breath and let destiny's music wash through your nervous system. Simply let go and enjoy the benefits, the rewards of delaying.
delaying gratification by choosing to practice yoga. and your toes. Reach the arms overhead. Take long, deep breaths. Draw the knees to the chest. And roll to one side. slowly to sitting. And close the eyes in meditation.
Let the mind drop into the stillness of the breath. And let the heart be open and filled with compassion and loving kindness. closing meditation is from the Christian monk Thomas Merton. Do not depend on the hope of results. You may have to face the fact that your work will be apparently worthless and even achieve no result at all, if not perhaps results opposite to what you expect. As you get used to this idea, you start more and more to concentrate not on the results, but on the value, the rightness, the truth of the work itself. You gradually struggle less and less for an idea and more and more for specific people. In the end, it is the reality of personal relationship that saves everything. I have asked Destiny Muhammad to lead us in our closing seven alms. to the earth. Bow to all beings. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining us for this practice. Thank you to Destiny Muhammad for providing such beautiful music. If you'd like to learn more about her music and her work, destinymuhammad.net is her website. I want to give a special thanks to the yoga models who demonstrated poses for you today. It started to make this experience feel like a class again. And we are headed there soon. Um, so keep an eye on the Grace Cathedral website, gracecathedral.org. While you're there, you can learn about our reopening plans for Yoga on the Labyrinth, as well as make a donation if you feel inspired. That will help us to produce more videos like this one and ultimately start a live in-person class like we once used to have. If you're interested, you can also connect with us on Facebook through the Yoga on the Labyrinth Facebook page. <clears throat> and you can reach out to me through my website, which is darrenmain.com. It's been such a joy to practice with you. See you soon. Namaste.